Hello everyone and welcome to my review of The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid came out in November of 1989 and stars Jodie Benson, Buddy Hackett, Christopher Daniel Barnes, Jason Marin, Pat Carroll, and Samuel E. Wright. The Little Mermaid is very special to me for a number of reasons and one of those reasons that I think a lot of people like it is it brought back the Disney, uh, the Renaissance era. It started the Renaissance era uh, which included The Lion King, Aladdin, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Mulan, Pocahontas, etc. And uh, The Little Mermaid really kind of revived what Disney was doing. Disney was kind of struggling with uh, the 70s and 80s after Walt Disney's death. Walt Disney passed away during the production of The Jungle Book, the last movie that he had his hands on. And they weren't really connecting with the magic. Uh, movies like Robin Hood, The Fox and the Hound, uh, and then they hit rock bottom, rock bottom with the Black Cauldron. And really, Disney was really struggling with finding that magic that they had with movies like Cinderella, Lady and the Tramp, um, Bambi, Snow White, Pinocchio. And so I think it's very, very cool that The Little Mermaid brought all that, all that back. It was written and directed by John Musker and Ron Clements. And... I'm going to kind of touch on what makes The Little Mermaid special, both for all fans. Why did it kind of start Disney's renaissance era? Why did it bring it back? And why I love it so much. First of all, you can't go far without touching on the music. The music of The Little Mermaid is absolutely great. It was both worked on by uh, Alan Menken with music, Howard Ashton with the lyrics, and it completely changed everything. First of all, The Little Mermaid is... The princess movies, they brought them back. They had had a princess movie at Disney since Sleeping Beauty in 1959. Also in 1989, 30 years later, they said, okay, let's bring back Disney. Let's bring back, not just princess, but let's bring back a musical. And they really wanted to bring back a Disney musical. And they did that with, with this movie. And the, the music is absolutely sensational. Uh, Under the Sea won, won an award for Best Original Song. And Kiss the Girl was also nominated for that. My personal favorite is Part of uh, Part of Your World, by sung by Jodie Benson. And this song was almost cut out of the movie, which is shocking because it's such an such iconic song, not only for this movie, but it's iconic for Disney in general. And what I love about this song is just it's slow, and it's that I want song that is so popular, and that's something that Howard Ashman and Alan Menken really wanted to bring back was an I want song. And it's just such a great song with Ariel talking about what she wants. And, and here's what makes it special to me is that it's just so relatable. She really wants something really bad. I don't do anything to achieve it. And that's why it's so relatable to me and everyone else is that when I have something in mind, I have a goal. I'm going to do whatever it takes to achieve that. And she really wants to be up on the land. Um, before the song started, she hadn't met Prince Eric yet. But in general, she just wanted to be on land. And the song just replicates everything that she wants. And she goes for it. And I like her that Ariel goes for it. It's just a song and the iconic twirls that she does. She climbs and it crescendos and it goes and it gets bigger and bigger. And then it, and then it, just, it just keeps building. And it's just a perfect song. Um, and then what I also love the most, my favorite scene in The Little Mermaid, is the most iconic scene I think of this movie and one of the most iconic Disney scenes of all time is the reprise where she goes on the rock and um, kind of just ex explodes with the waves and scuttles flying around and it's just beautiful the reprise of the Little Mermaid is so good um, where we're um, I don't know when I don't know how, know how but I know something started right now it's just great uh, I love that scene love that and then Under the Sea is such a good contrast. We get the I Want song, and then Under the Sea is so much fun. I cannot help but smile throughout the entire song of Sung by Sebastian of Under the Sea by the great Samuel Lee Wright. I just smile. The amount of colors, the amount of different animals and fish they use, how creative they are, uh, the instruments they're using, whether it's tails or fins or teeth, and then, you know, got the guy who's the bass, um, the kind of the low voice, high voices. Under the Sea is just absolute brilliance at Disney magic. And that, that's another thing about The Little Mermaid is Disney magic. is It's all throughout the whole movie. Really got Musker and Clements, fantastic work by them. Bringing that Disney magic back. 
and under the sea it is so much fun with all the animals and everything else it's a blast to watch and something that really made this movie super fun kiss the girl another great song uh samuel lee wright again and um, i just really like the the setting and the different birds now they got stuff now they use um animals on the land they got you know pelicans and storks and different birds and you know before we just had the fish now we have different environment and i always thought ariel looked so looked so beautiful in that boat and her in our in our outfit and Eric and it really is a very magical moment and you know it can really you really buy into this movie and buy into what Musker and Clemens really wanted to sell with this movie and and the magic they had and and so the music right there is is absolutely great and it, and really the score too the start oh my goodness the start with the fathoms below and then we get to um, transition to underwater with the fish and we really get that awesome Mencken score that's really kind of a, a part of your world kind of deal. That theme resonates throughout the whole thing. And I just love when they get the, the little mermaid, the title comes out and we get the voices and then the mermaids come in. And just that the score, it, it really brings back. It feels old school. I love the start. So the music, the score, the amazing songs. Oh, I can't go, go far without talking about Pat Carroll. Poor Unfortunate Souls is so good. She really sells it, it delivers, and it's not only a song, but there's a little, it kind of, it's it's Poor Unfortunate Souls, then we get a little dialogue, then she continues the song, and it's crescendos, and it builds again, builds, and oh, I, I get chills every time um, when, she, when she really rises, um, once Ariel looks like she's about to agree, and I always loved Ariel. When she, she kind of looks away from the contract she signs it, she looks away. But really, the music in this movie is absolutely phenomenal. Really got to thank Alan Menken and Howard Ashman for the music they set in this movie. Another reason this movie is such a great movie is the characters. And really think, I like the humor of these three characters. Sebastian, Samuel Lee E. Wright mentioned him, Scuttle, Buddy Hackett, and Flounder by Jason Marin. Really, really good work of... Making them really fun characters, really getting the humor side. I always love Flounder with the shark at the at the start of the movie. Him being, you know, they, he says, "Oh, uh, Ariel says stop being such a guppy," and it's just so fun. And they come up, and then and, and uh, you see Scuttle, and it's just really, really good work by those characters. Pat Carroll is phenomenal as Ursula. She's really threatening. You really buy her as a threat and this powerful being. Christopher Daniel Barnes as Prince Eric. I really like. What they did with Prince Eric, very, very subtle, believable. He really, he doesn't just rush out and find the princess. He's been searching for the one, and he, and when he knows, it'll hit him. And uh, Jody Benson, um, I'm gonna say something about Jody Benson. Jody Benson is the reason why the Little Mermaid is so special to me. First of all, I love Ariel. Ariel is uh, one of my top five, top all-time favorite princesses of Disney princesses. And very relatable, not only to what she is and who she is, but she also is a redhead like me. But Jodi Benson really embodies, and she said this one time um, after they made the announcement of Halle Bailey as new Ariel. The spirit of Ariel is what makes her special, and Jodi really, really brings out the spirit of Ariel, um, the innocent innocence of Ariel, the free spirit, the kindness, the grace, the fun. Ariel is so amazing and Ariel is the number one reason why I love The Little Mermaid. I love everything about Ariel. I love who she is. I love how how she just goes for it and she's fun and her voice, again, Jody Benson's phenomenal work. I love her voice. And anytime you get that Anytime she sings at all, it's just magical, especially at the end where Ursula has the necklace or she's Vanessa and it tears off and falls and Ariel's voice finds her. She goes to the, aboard the, the ferry and just when her voice comes back, it's great. And Ariel is absolutely the reason why I love this movie. And, and the voice work by Benson and the way they just per portray Ariel as this, you know, fun-loving, innocent... 16 year old princess mermaid and how she's so curious and she wants to know more 
And it, even though she does make a really risky choice going with Ursula and surrendering her voice, you know, you gotta, I love that she's willing to do something out of love. I think it's very relatable. We've all had a crush on someone. We've all fallen in love. And when you do, haven't we all been to a place where we love someone so much we'll do anything for them? And she's willing to risk her voice. And she really almost pulled it off if it wasn't for uh, Flotsam and Jetsam tipping over the boat there and kiss the girl. But Ariel is just absolutely phenomenal. I love everything about Ariel. And she really sells the movie. And that's what I think brought this movie these characters and the music all really brought it back to what that Disney magic inspired Aladdin and Jasmine, inspired Beauty and the Beast, Belle and the Beast, inspired all the, the Lion King and really the musicals following it. It brought back the musical and Ariel is just everything you want in a Disney princess in my opinion. Like I said, one of my all time favorite Disney princesses. And just the overall theme of this movie just that sense of the music and the score and I love the ocean and the bright colors of the ocean and when they go up on the land, I like the how that looks and just everything about this movie looks good. And the way they use the, how the illustrators animated everyone. I really think that that's what makes another part of this movie is what makes it so well. Is that it's this combination of how it looks and how it feels and how it makes you feel. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough. It's the score by Mencken. It's the lyrics. It's the direction that Musker and Clements brings it with these characters, with Ariel. Uh, another couple of quick things that, that really I like about this movie, that about a couple of Ariel scenes. I always love Ariel when, when they're in the ballroom and she's about to eat dinner with Eric. And she takes a fork thinking it's, you know, that's what they use for their hair, like Scuttle says. Um, and she's brushing her hair with this fork and immediately when she looks around she knows she's doing something wrong and she puts it down and she has this face and this look of complete embarrassment and she looks so sad and I just feel for Ariel every time. I love the look that they got with Ariel and that she's she's kind of naive and she kind of she kind of feels bad because she just she's in this room with her crush and she just totally embarrasses herself. Not her fault. Scuttle told her it was something, a fork is what you use for your hair. And her look of her face is just perfectly captured. And then she comes right back and snores or blows on on um, Grimsby's, you know, pipe. So she picks herself back up. Another reason I love Ariel. And another part that really encaptures Ariel, who she is. I like when the fairy, and this is a sad part of the movie, when the fairy's gone... Prince Eric and Vanessa are going to get married, and she just sits there in the dock, and she she goes, and, you know, kind of holds her knees like this, and she starts crying knowing there is nothing she can do. She has no voice. It's about to be sunset. Eric's going to be with Vanessa. She, there's nothing she can do, and you know, it's not like she can do anything to swim off, and she can't even speak, and Ursula is about to take control of her for the rest of her life, and just that look of just... Everything just comes to her and she starts crying and it's the perfect encapturement of just there's nothing she can do and her crush is gone. And I have, again, those are two scenes that I just, I feel for Ariel. I, I'm with her all the way and what 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 can you do? And it's it's a perfectly, Musker and Clemens captures those scenes of, of kind of an embarrassing scene, which is a good laugh and uh, a sad scene. And another iconic scene I love Maybe it's not iconic for Disney, but it's iconic for The Little Mermaid is the aerial hair flip when she gets transferred into a human from Ursula. She rises to the top and she flips her hair back and it's Disney magic. We've all seen the aerial hair flip. Very, It's like a two second. She rises from the ocean. It's a gorgeous shot. She flips her hair back and I love the aerial hair flip. Overall, this movie has a combination of characters, good writing, Ariel, the music, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun, and that's what brought back the Disney Renaissance, is the fun, the characters, the music, it inspired Beauty and the Beast, it inspired Aladdin, it inspired The Lion King, it inspired Mulan, Pocahontas, all these musicals to come, it brought back the Disney magic, it brought back Disney to relevance, 
and The Little Mermaid is a very special movie for Disney and a very special movie to me 